Welcome everyone to module three on effective education cluster meetings. My name is Mackenzie. I'm an education coordination specialist with the Global Education Cluster. In this video, we will cover the key steps to effectively plan and facilitate education cluster meetings, considering what needs to be done before, during, and after. First of all, let's remember that a meeting is a tool to reach an objective. The cluster core functions do not mention an education cluster meeting, and there's no rule to say that clusters must meet. So therefore, it's important to know why we would want to hold a meeting and what the strategic objectives of the particular meeting we are planning are. With the purpose in mind, we can also consider if an alternative to the cluster meeting might be a better way to achieve our objective, perhaps through a phone call or an education cluster newsletter or a one-on-one -on -one meeting. Having said that, good, regular, meetings can be a great tool for cluster coordinators. You might want to develop a meeting calendar and agree on a regular schedule. Remember to do this in consultation with your partners and also the Ministry of Education and make sure the meeting does not clash with other OCHA meetings or relevant cluster meetings. For example, if child protection and education clusters both schedule their meetings on the same day, this might be challenging for many partners. Once you have your schedule, communicate the date, time, and frequency of your meetings with everyone on your contact list, and if possible, upload it on your website as well. So let's dig into the details of the meeting itself. We'll now go through some of the key points, and you can find these also in the checklist for meeting essentials, which is part of this week's required reading. So what do we need to do before the meeting? As we already mentioned, Defining the purpose of the meeting is critical. What are your objectives and expected outcomes of holding a meeting? A clear, well-structured agenda will help us to achieve this. We should develop the agenda in consultation with relevant individuals, particularly the Ministry of Education counterpart. If there are any sensitive issues to be discussed, it may be helpful to do some preparatory work with key actors prior to the meeting to ensure you're fully aware of their position and also to brief them on the areas that you want consensus to be reached during the meeting. When you're developing your agenda, be clear and realistic about what can be achieved during the meeting and set a realistic and appropriate length for each agenda item. Make sure the items are sequenced logically and put the major and difficult issues first. Also allocate space on the agenda to cover outstanding issues from the previous meeting. You can also include standing agenda items so these are agenda items that are repeated for every education cluster meeting. They would include issues that are important to your cluster members, which could be things like gender and inclusion, accountability of feedback, or other priority areas that your cluster members want to dedicate time to. When you're planning the who of your meeting, First of all, think about the roles of your team members and co-facilitators in delivering and facilitating the meeting. Ensure that the roles are clear well in advance, thinking about who will chair the meeting, who will take notes, who will present, and who will be able to support with the IT. Ideally, where it's appropriate, your Ministry of Education counterpart should chair the meeting with your support. Agree with them in advance who will lead on each of the agenda items. Also identify a note taker. Preferably this is someone who is not presenting, but who does know the context and language well. Send an invitation email early to your entire contact list. Also determine if anyone who's not on your contact list should be invited to this particular meeting. Invitation emails should include the draft agenda and also welcome partners to submit additional agenda items ahead of the meeting if they want to. Your invitation should include information about logistics for the meeting and any other relevant materials, including previous meeting notes and expectations of the participants. Also determine if some of your stakeholders might need to be invited to the meeting in a different way, either by phone or in person, if you think that email is not the best way to share that information with them. Then we'll look at venue and logistics. So determining the location of the meeting, you should think about somewhere that is accessible to everybody who you want to attend and will be enough um, space for everyone to be there. Some partners may not be able to attend the meeting. If possible, consider using or incorporating technology to allow people to participate remotely. Also determine if language considerations should be brought into the meeting. 
if you need a translator, for example. And make sure when you book the venue that you leave a little bit of buffer space at the beginning and at the end so that you have enough time to set up for the meeting and also in case you hang around afterwards speaking to some of your cluster members. Finally, we need to prepare the presentation and meeting materials ahead of time. Make sure that any of the presentations and the materials are translated if that's necessary and print any handouts in advance. Make sure that you print enough for all of the participants that you expect to be attending. Handout materials might include things like the agenda, key cluster documents, which might include maps or dashboards, and any other reference material that would be helpful to facilitate the meeting. And finally, print the contact list with extra blank lines at the bottom and an additional row on the right-hand side for participants to use as an attendance sheet. So during the meeting, as we just said, bring that attendance sheet along and use this to take the attendance of your participants. Let them know early on in the meeting that the attendance sheet is circulating and explain that it's a printed copy of the contact list with additional lines and a column for their signature. So if partners are already on the contact list, they just need to check that their details are correct and add their signature at the end. They could also check if there's any changes to the details of their colleagues that are listed there, and you can ask them to amend those as well. If partners are new, they should add their name and contact details to the bottom of the list in the blank rows that you added. So at the start of the meeting, if your Ministry of Education counterpart is the chair, they should be the ones to open the meeting. Remember to thank everyone for attending and introduce yourself and members of your team, as there will often be new partners attending for the first time. You don't need to do a full round of introductions, but organizations who are also attending for the first time can have the opportunity to introduce themselves. Finally, remember to identify any donors or press who are in the room and make sure that rules are clear around information sharing and confidentiality. The next tip for facilitating is to follow the agenda. Before the meeting, ask if there's any last minute amendments to the agenda and include these in the AOB at the end. So make sure to follow the agenda closely. You need to stop any digression when it's needed, but also keep some flexibility in case you need to adapt the agenda for issues that may emerge during discussion that were not anticipated. Secondly, follow the agenda. You can ask if there are any last minute additions to be included in AOB at the end, but otherwise keeping to the agenda is key. Try to stop digression when it is needed, but also keep flexibility in case new issues emerge during the course of the discussion that you didn't anticipate. You can also remember to park items that come up that are not on the agenda to be discussed at the end. In terms of facilitation, think about how you will encourage and manage your cluster members' participation in the meeting. Facilitation is a management skill. When people are face-to-face, -face, they need to talk, they need to listen, and then they need to decide. It's your role as a neutral coordinator to assist in managing this conversation. Facilitate the discussion in a way that encourages everyone's inputs and ensures constructive engagement from all participants. Keep an eye on new partners or partners who might be using a language that's not their mother tongue and make sure that they're included. You can encourage their participation by asking for information and their opinion. If it's necessary, remember to clarify or elaborate on your points. And where possible, press for closure for each agenda item, making agreements on decisions and who will do what by when. These are the action points. Ensure the action points are also well captured and the responsibilities are allocated. Reaching consensus. It's the role of the cluster team to help reach consensus. This doesn't mean that everyone totally agrees, but it means that all opinions should have been heard and encouraged. Differences are viewed as helpful. A key indicator of whether or not consensus has been reached is that everyone agrees that they can live with the final decision after every effort has been made to meet outstanding issues. So instead of asking, do you all agree? You can ask, can everyone live with this? At the end, wrap up the meeting by recapping the decisions, action points, and those responsible for taking the action, and any agreed deadlines. Review the meeting schedule and frequency if you already know when the next meeting will be and where it will take place. And remember to thank everyone warmly. Without our partners, the cluster does not function. 
Immediately after the meeting, remember to be available. You can discuss one-on-one -on -one with individuals or small groups, and it's a great opportunity to clarify issues or discuss more specific or sensitive topics in depth. Information managers can also use this time to sit with partners and work through how to use the four W's if there's any confusion or issues in 4W reporting. Secondly, it's important that our meeting notes capture the important points from the meeting and the action points. The notes should not be a word-for-word -word transcription of what was said in the meeting, but rather a summary of the key issues discussed, including any facts and figures, any decisions that were taken, and action points with the responsible people identified and timelines. You can also include the date and time and location of the next meeting if you already know it. Before you send out the meeting notes, consider if translation is necessary or at least translating the key points and summary. You can also share the meeting notes, not just with those who attended, but any other stakeholders, especially your subnational cluster coordinators, coordinators of other clusters, OCHA, participating donors, or other people who might be relevant to you. If key decision makers, for example, a senior ministry official was not present, this could be a great opportunity to follow up with them, recap on the meeting, and brief them on decisions that were taken. So these were some of the key points to consider before, during, and after your education cluster meeting. As I mentioned, you can also find these and more in the checklist, which is part of your essential reading for this week. And I'm sure during these few slides, you're already thinking of many of the common challenges that come up when you're planning and facilitating education cluster meetings. As you move through the rest of module three, please reflect on these and be ready to contribute the challenges and hopefully ideas for solutions in the discussion board at the end.